Hello everyone and welcome to another Coffee Break Talk. Today I'm going to show you some of the beautiful orchids to be found in Newfoundland, which we saw on an Alpine Garden Society trip in 2019, led by Todd Boland, who's a well-known botanist from Newfoundland and he's given talks to the AGS and written books on the flora of the island. Now, just to show you where Newfoundland is, it's a large island lying off the eastern coast of Canada. But where we were actually going in Newfoundland to find the orchids was the Northern Peninsula. And we started in the south of this circle at Deer Lake and then made our way north to the Grossmoor National Park, where in fact there are substantial outcrops of serpentine rock. And then we headed north to Western Brook Pond and Point Reach before reaching the northernmost point at a place called Burnt Cape. One of the first orchids that we saw was this, Cypripedium reginae. It's the showy ladies slipper and it's really beautiful. It grows to about 80 centimetres in height so it's quite a robust plant and it has large flowers. They measure something like 12 to 8 millimetres across. It's quite rare. It's restricted really to the forested fens and seepages over limestone. And then we were taken to see one of the rarest orchids of all, this Coloriza striata subspecies Freelandii, the striped coral root. Now this is really only found in a very small area of the Grossmoor National Park. And it's a leafless saprophyte. That means it obtains its nutrients from dead organic matter or waste. And you can see it's got no chlorophyll in that plant. But it's a, quite an attractive little orchid. And the kind of area we were just on the outskirts of a sort of wooded area like this Lomond River Trail. From there we went to the Western Brook Pond. And this is a spectacular freshwater field. You can just see the entrance to it through the gap in the hills. It's about 16 kilometres long, surrounded by ancient granites, gneisses and schists of the Precambrian era. That's over 600 million years ago. And then, of course, the mountains were later sculpted by ice. And along the way, we found the dragon's mouth orchid in the bottom left, which we'll see in, again in a minute which likes sphagnum bogs and ferns and is fragrant, and the corn lily on the right, which is another woodland plant. Uh, so it was growing at the edge of these woodlands that you can see in the back of the picture with loose umbels of two to eight flowers and blue berries, which actually are mildly poisonous. But this is a close up of the orchid, the Arethusa bulbosa, known as the dragon's mouth orchid. A less showy orchid, perhaps, was Platanthra hookeri, but again, it's quite rare. It's found on turfy heath over limestone, and it has a pair of ground-hugging round to elliptical basal leaves about 15 centimetres long. And the fragrant flowers have a jaw-like appearance. You can just see the leaves as well uh, in, the, in the back of the picture. On the right-hand side, we've got another orchid, another green orchid, Platanthra aquilonis, and this is known as the tall northern green orchid because it grows to a height of about 60 centimetres. It doesn't have any scent, but it is quite a robust plant. And then in the centre, obviously not orchids, but I'm showing you a rather attractive iris, the blue flag, with three large falls, the base of which is often yellow with dark veins, and then it has three smaller erect standards. And the flowers are about 10 centimetres across, so they're quite showy. At the top, we've got a fern, the cinnamon fern, Osmondastrum cinnamomia, which has a vase-like crown of fronds at the end of a thick rhizome. And then the rackies are covered in cream to rust coloured woolly hairs when they're young, which is what you see in the picture. And then the sterile fronds turn from golden to rust in the autumn. One of the most beautiful orchids, though, that we came across, I think, has to be Cypripedium parviflorum. This is the yellow ladies slipper orchid. It's widespread. It has a bright yellow pouch and the petals are a sort of greenish to reddish colour, uh, as are the sepals. 
and the lateral petals are usually twisted uh, but you do get straight forms as well and it's quite widespread not only in Newfoundland but across North America too. Normally it's an upland plant but of course in Newfoundland it's pretty close to the sea and it prefers slightly acid to neutral soils in woodland or shaded boggy habitats. And then we came across this specimen. I say it's got a hundred flowers. I actually gave up counting. I couldn't quite determine how many, but it, it was it's very close to a hundred. And I think if you were ever in a position to show that at an Alpine Garden Society show, it would walk off with the Farrah Medal. It is a stunning plant. We also found another cholerariza. Cholerariza trifida, and this is known as the early coral root. It's a leafless saprophytic species again, like the other one, with a smooth yellow stem, only about 20 centimetres high, so it's quite dainty. And then these it bears these green flowers in loose racemes of about 3 to 15 little florets. By the time we reached Point Riche on the coast, we came across the pink-flowered wintergreen, Pyrola acerifolia. Uh, and you can see there are caribou there too on the beach. And the orchid has these rich pink bell-like flowers and also quite deep pink leafless stems. All the leaves are at the base. They're quite leathery and kidney shaped and toothed. Now the caribou, it does look a bit mangy and that's because of course it's the summer and it's losing its winter coat, it's molting. In 1995, there were said to be about 20,000 woodland caribou in Newfoundland, and the slow-growing lichens of the limestone barrens uh, are the mainstay of its winter diet, but they do eat other green plants in the summer. And they eat about five kilograms of lichen a day. But in the winter, they move into the forests for shelter from both the bitter cold um, and the snow. This is the frog orchid. It has green flowers in a loose cylindrical spike and there are six lance-shaped elliptical leaves. This is Burnt Cape right at the northern end of the northern peninsula of Newfoundland. And we visited this site twice because we really wanted to see the Calypso bulbosa in full flower. Sadly, the flowers we needed another day which we hadn't got so the flowers were not fully open but you can see it's a most beautiful little orchid it's very rare it's only found in this area on short grassy turf overlying limestone the inside of the pouch shaped lip is pale pink and that's spotted with a tuft of yellow or white hairs and then you actually get two horn-like projections on the outside of the lip also growing, though, in this area was the Arctic raspberry, uh, which is a subshrub, and it does produce edible fruit, although, of course, we weren't there late enough to try it. On the way south again towards Deer Lake, we found another rare orchid, and that was Galliaris rotundifolia. Now, that bears its flowers in racemes of 2 to 12 flowers. The stem is leafless, as you could see, and the... Um, lip is spotted and streaked with magenta. The flowers are actually about one and a half centimetres in width. And it's a very dainty little plant. It's a very attractive orchid. But now we're back to the Grossmoor National Park. We went to have another look at the, the Arethusa bog, where there were lots of dragon's mouth orchids, not just these pink ones, but lots of different colour forms, as you can see here, uh, which look really spectacular. It's a most attractive orchid. And also growing there was a plant which is actually the floral emblem for Newfoundland and Labrador. That's Saracenia purpurea, the northern pitcher plant. And as you will have realised, it's found on acid sphagnum bogs and seepages in the serpentine areas. This does like to grow where the serpentine rock is outcropping in the Grossmoor National Park. If you look at the right hand image, you can see that the leaves are hollow and pitcher shaped. The leaf tips have got downward pointing stiff hairs so that when an insect gets into the pitcher, there's really no escape. 
the insides of the pitcher are smooth and the bottom contains water to trap and drown the insects. But it's a very attractive plant and it's a long lasting plant because the leaves turn wine red in the winter. And although the drooping red flower petals are relatively short lived, the shiny leathery purple red sepals remain again into the autumn. Now we're almost back to Deer Lake and we went on a walk by the Humber River at that point. And to our delight, we found the pink lady slipper orchid. This was totally unexpected. We were not expecting to find it at all. And it has these beautiful rose pink pouches and then greenish purple petals and sepals. Growing with it, though, was another rather dainty little flower known as the one flowered wintergreen, Monesis uniflora. This is um, a little plant that has solitary fragrant flowers and it's quite tricky to photograph because it doesn't grow very tall and getting underneath to photograph the flower is not easy. And as you can see, the, the walk that we were taking was actually beside the Humber River at Deer Lake. So this has brought me to the end of this talk and I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the beautiful orchids and other plants at Newfoundland. Thank you.